ولدت في شهر شهر واحد اه شهر يناير يوم 26 يوم 26 كان يوم جمعه اه كان يوم كان يوم جمعه كان يوم جمعه لا كان بعد ما ولدت الدكتور كتب تقرير ورحنا تابعنا بره فالدكتور قال لنا اشاعات والكلام ده وفعرفنا. مش مرات طبيعي يعني مرات عشان آه. السابع Each year in Egypt, 20,000 children are diagnosed with a congenital heart disease. Until recently, these families had to travel outside of the country for corrective surgery. Many could not afford this trip. Doctors in Egypt are beginning to attempt pediatric heart surgery, but the learning curve is gradual and operations are often unsuccessful. Still, the line for corrective heart surgery in Alexandria is long. Most of these children will die waiting. كنا متابعين مع الدكتور يعني فحولنا على المستشفى وقال لنا في وفد جاي يوم 11 يوم 7 11 ده حته مني وكل حاجه في حياتي. Rokhaya is one of these children. Her heart has a large hole that renders her breathless, lethargic and blue. Um, I was eating at the Chinese restaurant and um, I got this fortune cookie. I open it. You, you would do well to work as a team in the coming week. When the local um, families heard that there was a team coming, they just you know brought uh, all their kids uh, for evaluation. Dr. Hashmi is screening hundreds of fatally ill children, but only 17 of these can be chosen. I am so worried about her because she is uh, my only child. Dr. Bailey and Dr. Hashmi must decide who will have a chance and who won't. We're doing CAF conference where the cardiologist will present the case and then we'll review the diagnostic information like echocardiograms and heart catheterizations. Five and a half months. Wow. Four kilos. Yeah. Normally, this would be like a baby who is about a month old would weigh this amount, and the baby's five and a half months. There's a large tube that comes out of the heart that supplies blood to the whole body. It's like a garden hose. It's blocked off totally. So to the lower body, the blood is not getting there properly. This is obviously a very serious uh, condition. We saw probably uh, in excess of 100 patients, and uh, at the end we were only able to offer treatment to about 17. It is the most difficult thing uh, I think that um, we, and particularly I, have uh, had to face. يعني يقول لها رقية يعني قبل العملية يعني. كانت يعني كده ما بتشقاش كتير و وكانت بتلعب كتير وكانت المشي قليل السنه اللي فاتت يعني كان عيد ميلادها يعني وحصل ظروف وما عملناش عيد ميلاد يعني وقت المناسبات والاعياد وعياد تبقى تبقى هي تعبانه عند الدكتور وكده يعني يوم عيد ميلادها برضه كنا نعملوا عيد ميلاد ورحنا المستشفى وتكشف وكده Next on the list is Rokaya. The rest of her life will depend on the following 15 minutes, but the odds are not good. It all depends on Mr. Bailey's opinion right now. <laughs> so uh, he's going to have a look at all of the babies and uh, all of their investigations, and we'll decide uh, who has priorities. With surgery, with corrective surgery particularly, <clears throat> the survival pattern is almost like they didn't have heart disease at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is wrong. Mother. Rokhaya is diagnosed with tetralogy of Fallot, and lucky enough for her, she is at the right place with the right kind of heart disease. 
Okay. Okay for tomorrow. Oh sure. Yeah. Okay for tomorrow. Yeah. Did you For Egyptian parents, the morning of the heart operation is often the last day they see their child alive. All these patients uh, used to die in front of our eyes and we couldn't help them. And uh, we, 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 can, we could do nothing to, to, to save these children. Pretty thrilling thing to watch the transformation of the parents, particularly. They're scared and, you know, it really tests their faith. To allow you, even though their, their baby may be blue and they can tell if something has to be done, to hand their child over to you and, and let you turn your back and walk away with their baby. It's got to be a, a real moment of truth for them. Last year in Alexandria, more than half of all children who underwent heart surgery died on the operating table. It looks like she's just going to sleep now, and so she'll uh, soon be ready for us to start uh, working. This is her day. This is this is the day that's going to change her life forever. You want to start the activation? Hey, let's give it one more minute, and then yeah, go right ahead. Getting ready, trying to mix and match because I only brought so much, but it will be good, we'll make do. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and get to the next. We have been trying uh, many years to do surgeries from books. You just read the, the operation from a, a very good textbook and then you go open the chest of the patient and open the heart and do a, This is not a very good. Surgery alone in the operating room does not guarantee the child leaving the hospital alive. So the surgery may go well, but if post-operative care is not uh, done superbly, then complications can happen, even with the surgeon being the best. Back in the seats, they're able to rewarm the patient to normal temperature before they bring them to the ICU. They don't have the ability to rewarm them here, so we expect them to be cool, but um, we would like them obviously to be a little bit warmer. A low body temperature can be quite significant in a small baby. Uh, it can lower the heart rate, it can lower the blood pressure, the baby will not clot as well, 
so the bleeding can be severe. So this is a big deal because if the clotting is abnormal just from uh, low temperature, that might expose the child to the risk of going back to the operating room. We'll, we'll maybe do a, a, a blood gas we'll in like an hour or so. Because we already know our hemoglobin is low and okay, we can't do anything about it right now. So we'll run the potassium to replace the potassium. And then we will do a blood gas afterwards. Yes, yeah, so we need to... Calcium, but when is this done? When was this done? When was this done? This just doesn't seem right that it would go down that low. She's doing okay. We, she could be doing a lot better if we could get some blood products for her, but that has to be brought in by the family and we don't have to pack cells for her. So her hemoglobin's low. If we could get her hemoglobin back up, she would be doing a lot better. It's like a bubble. I'm not sure. لا هي تسمعك اه Many of the parents just had that one concern. Is my child going to be blue anymore? And so for them to see their child come back from the operating room pink and stay pink, that was a great blessing.
as we all know, the eye cannot do what the brain does not know. So we should always first know how to do a thing, then we try to do it in a proper way. <laughs> Look in their little eyes, and you think, you know, what? What will you do? What will your life be like one day? Because it, somehow, providentially, things came together for you to get a, another chance. أنا أحلامي إن تبقى دكتورة عشان تعالج الأطفال عشان هي أكتر واحدة حسد بألم وهي طفلة. أنا بحلم إنها تبقى دكتورة يعني. بتحب ال ال أنا مزج من أمي هات الحصان ده قول كده هات هات الحيوانات تحب الحاجات دي قوي قوي لا مش بحبش الحاجات الأليفة لا هتحب يعني الحيوانات تحب يعني الحيوانات قوي وتتفرج يعني قناة الحيوانات وتحب تتفرج على الحاجات دي يعني جنيت الحيوانات والحاجات دي الفراخ الرز وما كنا تشربه على الفراخ أي يوم بعد ما طلعت من العملية ده يعتبر يعني عيد ميلاد التاني بتاعها قولوا هي كانت في كابوس وصحت من رؤية <laughs> it was March 7th, 2009. It was just me and my friend and we decided to hop on the train and let it ride us all the way home. I started passing one of the streets where I, where we live, and it was still going pretty fast. So I started to get kind of scared because I was too scared to jump off. I started hanging from the side of the train, and um, I I lost my grip, and I fell. I didn't feel that I was going to die. I I wanted to just because of the fact that I lost my leg. Carson is an active 12-year-old. She's got um, mild developmentally delays with mental retardation, ADHD, and she's growth hormone deficient. Do we need to take those ones? We need to take your medicine every day, huh? <laughs> and then Sydney is 10, soon to be 11, but she's got CP, cerebral palsy of unknown origin, and she's un basically undiagnosed. We don't know why she has the challenges that she has. Um, she's fed by G-tube. She has seizure disorder and a hypotonia. You want some food? Huh? Yes? Yeah, okay, you want some? Very good. Very good, Sid. very good. And then Weston's your average little eight-year-old boy who's fun and loving and just 
goes along with it. He's really easygoing. We're constantly trying to find the balance between, you know, how does our fam whole family work as a whole and what's best for the family. Pero sí iba yo con el pendiente de que, y, y pidiéndole a Dios que no fuera él. Llegamos al lugar del accidente y ya, ya se lo habían llevado, ya no estaba él ahí. Pero estaba su ropa de él. Cuando vi su ropa de él, dije, sí es mi hijo. Me imaginé, y si, y si ya no está vivo. Not much after the cops came, the ambulance came. I heard them that they were going to take me to Loma Linda. Tenemos que hacer otra cirugía más, una de tantas más, porque van a ser varias. Y yo decía, pero que no se la pueden volver a poner. Yo todavía ahí decía, no se la pueden volver a poner, sabiendo que, que la pierna estaba, des... si yo misma había visto que, que había trozos de su, de su pierna ahí. When I get really depressed, I just start thinking about my future, when, um, like, how am I going to do this, how am I going to get a job, how am I going to go to school, and um, how am I going to get a, if, am I ever going to get married, or just things like that, and I start crying. And part is looking at Sydney and knowing that she might not walk, she might not ever talk. That's a real scary part, the fear of the, of the future, of what's going to happen when we're not there to take care of them. We think about all the fun that they're going to miss and all the fun that we're going to miss, you know. We won't have grandchildren from Sydney. Me digo así que, aunque nos duela y aunque llore, pero no, de Dios no, no reniego, no. Todo tiene un porqué y... Y pues si Dios así lo quiso, le digo, pues las fuerzas te van a... Yo le decía, mira, te dio, quizás te dio otra oportunidad de vida. Ah, podías haber quedado ahí y dijo, te voy a dejar vivo porque necesitas hacer algo. Hay algo que tú vas a hacer. No sé qué, pero por algo te dejo. With the family supporting me, I, I, I decided to, I have to overcome this. Between the time of seventh and eighth grade, the vacations, they, I heard about prosthetics and they, they were going to try to fit me for a prosthetic. It felt really weird. It was a big change, and um, I thought to myself, how am I ever going to walk on this? It's, it's difficult. With any uh, patient with an amputation, like Alex's, uh, through the knee or above the knee, very um, simple things that uh, he didn't even think about before now was a challenge. Being able to walk, walk on uneven surfaces, going up and down steps. And for Alex, being a young young man, skateboarding, um, biking. I, I felt a lot of times it was hard, um, but after a few, a few months, I, I got the hang of it, started walking without any help. We challenged each other to a 5K, and Alex beat me by more than 10 minutes. My time was around 21, 22 minutes. My dad ran with me. I'm so proud of him, and from the beginning, from the get-go, I, I bet my money on Alex that he would have beat me, and he did. <laughs> As part of our rehabilitation process here at Loma Linda, uh, I do introduce him to Possibilities. Possibilities is a community organization uh, here at Loma Linda, a nonprofit which helps reintegrate um, our patients with physical disabilities back into the community. When I first heard of possibilities, um, it looked like a bright light in a dark alley. Like, it, I just wanted to try it out. I had to. Um. Possibilities has been a great part of our lives, so they've helped us out a lot. Possibilities kind of got the ball rolling on what we've done to our house. Tina mentioned that one day we want to uh, make our, one of our bathrooms handicap accessible. Well, they jumped in and said, we want to do that for you. And knowing that there's a place that we can go and talk to people and see people um, who have the same challenges is, we don't feel so isolated. I mean, a lot of people could sit there and go, oh, I, I understand exactly what you're going through. No, you don't. But these people do. When people go through a major illness or injury, they lose hope oftentimes. So our goal is to help them have hope and then to heal them 
you know, which may not always just be physical healing. They have to be healed as a person as well, and their family unit has to be healed. And then they can move into transforming themselves, and, and they do. My goal was to learn how to skate um, when I go back to school, so I was happy and I started skating with my friends again. They were surprised, and when I told them I could skate, they didn't believe me, and then I, I skated with them. I did ramps with them, and they believed me. After my accident, I, I'm more determined to school. I, I want to get a, a good career. In high school, um, it's harder, but I'm, I still have A's and B's. My, my last um, progress report I got was um, my GPA was 4.29. When I grow up, I want to for sure enter the medical field, but I don't know what kind of doctor exactly. Um, right now, I'm thinking of orthopedic surgeon. The, the best thing about our kids is that they're cool kids. You wake up and Carson's awake and she's got a hug for you every single morning. Sydney, that smile of hers will light up a room. And Weston, you know, he's, for someone who's had to put up with this his whole life, he's done a really good job. You know, the thing is, is that they've given us so much. We've learned so much about patience and kindness and an awareness of, you know, that we're all different. And you don't, you learn not to judge people about what they're doing because you don't have no idea what kind of struggles they have. When you look at these people that have come through these illnesses or injuries and they've, they've survived and thrived, and there are heroes. I haven't been back to, the, to that site ever since the accident. I'm, I'm just nervous, the, just the whole, the whole atmosphere of that place. I want to overcome this accident. It's just something I have to do. It just has to be done. Once I walk over those tracks, I'm, I'm going to feel great about myself. I'm going to be, wow, I did it.